The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Transcribed and presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. For a moment, we're going to hear from a representative of our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, one of the most promising boys in my hometown leaves for college. This boy's father died ten years ago. But the son is getting the college education because his dad started an equitable education fund a few days after the boy was born. And that's one good reason why I like my job as a representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. In approximately 14 minutes, I'll be back to give the whole story of an equitable education fund, an important contribution to American education made by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Chinatown Shakedown. Summer vacations are ending, and with the advent of fall, many people are looking ahead to how they will fare in business in the coming year. It is not within the province of the men directing the Federal Bureau of Investigation to predict what the coming months will mean to the economic picture. However, they are in a position to tell you that the graph kept on the number of major crimes each month is climbing upward. Unless something is done... This will be another banner year for the army of American criminals. But the picture is not entirely dark. There is some reason to hope that the decent citizens of this country are becoming aware of the danger to them in the current crime wave. Throughout the nation, there are unofficial citizens' committees being formed to further educate the public. And if the job is done thoroughly enough, this war can be won. The ultimate goal of this campaign is for you, the citizen, to protect yourself as best you can against the ravages of the criminal, against the many disguises he wears before he strikes. Tonight's file opens in the Chinatown district of a large eastern city. A woman has just emerged from a building on one of the streets in this crowded area. She sits on a folding chair, leans contentedly against a wall, and watches and listens to the passing frog. Fifty cents at all it costs. See the opium dens, the price of jades, the Chinese dinner. Fifty cents at all it takes. <laughs> you missed them, Eddie. Yeah, I'll start getting them. It's hot today. Their feet will start hurting. Well, here come some more suckers. Let's see what you do with them. Okay. Hey, y'all, ladies. Fifty cents for a ride to the heart of Chinatown. See the ancient city with the ancient people. Hey! Hello, Irene. Huh? Tom Bentley. That's right. Well, where did you come from? I haven't seen you in years. Yeah, it's been a long time. Well, what are you doing down here? Looking for you. Huh? I hear you're doing pretty good. Oh, I can't complain. What's the action? I own this joint here. What is it? Oh, kind of a Chinese juke joint. <laughs> So that's the last? None. It's legitimate. Are you kidding? No. Yeah. It's a nice, steady touch. I find stealing is too undependable. You mean you're off lots of me? Well, uh, not if I can pick up a fast buck without too much work. Ah. I uh, think I've got something that comes under that heading. That's why I came to see you. What is it? I need a man to work with me. Somebody who knows Chinatown, knows the people, knows how much dough they've got, who their friends are. You get what I mean? Yeah. Well, I got the guy. Who is he? Coming right toward us now. Huh? He feels for that bus. Hey, Eddie! Yeah. Come here a minute, will you? Is he still? Like a thief. What do you want? Eddie White, this is Tom Bentley. Hiya. Hiya, buddy. Hiya. Tom's got a job for you. What kind of a job? I need a Chinese sucker list, Eddie. What kind of people you need on it? Folks with a lot of money and a very kind heart. Hello? Hello, Mr. 
Bentley? That's right. Eddie. Oh, hello, Eddie. How's it going? Oh, I just located a red hot prospect. Good. She's old. She's got plenty of loot. Yeah, what's her name? Well, before I tell you that, I want to check something with you. What? You said Irene gets 25% and I get 25% of whatever yeah, you're yeah, for, yeah. Right? yeah, that's right. Her name is Madam Young. Ah, Irene talked to her yet? Sure, she just called her. She said she was your secretary. You were from the immigration department. Good. Everything like you said. Good. Did she go for it? <laughs> like it was a bag of leeching nuts. <laughs> Irene made an appointment for you to see her at 8.30 tonight. Her address is 959 Green Street. I'll be there. <laughs> A minute, please. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you, Madam Young? Yes. I'm Mr. Bentley from the Immigration Department. Here are my credentials. Oh, yes. I was expecting you. Please come in. Uh, thank you. Thank you. My uh, boss in the department asked me to come here and explain this to you. Yes, I would be pleased if you would. Will you sit down? Uh, thank you. Now, uh, Madam Young, what I tell you tonight must be kept in strict confidence. You see, the United States is going to raise the Chinese quota. That is a wonderful news, Mr. Bentley. Yes. When? Oh, soon, soon. You see, we understand what the victims of that terrible war must be going through. Terrible war. Oh, yes, yes. And, and we're making up a list of Chinese people who will be allowed to come to this country as permanent residents. Now, I understand that your sister has three boys still in China. That is the correct. Well, they can all get on the list. I, I just need their names. I would not be breaking law if oh. I did that, Mr. Benjamin. Madam Young, do you imagine that I would come here if this were against the law? Oh, no. No. Then uh, you'd uh, like them put on the list? It, it is possible. Well, yes. yeah, that's fine. Now, they'll be sent for as soon as you pay for their good behavior. Good. I do not understand. Well, you see, the United States wants to make sure that no one will come to this country and, and not, not work. Oh, they work hard. They're uh -huh. good boys. Yes, I'm sure. But, you see, to make sure that the government will not have to support them after they get here, whoever recommends people to be put on the list must put up the money for each name. You understand? How much? Uh, two 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 thousand dollars. That is a large amount, Mr. Oh, Benjamin. Well, well uh, after one year, if the person still has a job, you get the money back. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, do you uh, want to put up the security for them? When must you know? Uh, not later than tomorrow. You see, Chinese people from all over the country will be sending in names as soon as they find out about this list. Yes. Well, I will think about it, Mr. Bentley. Please call me tomorrow. Meanwhile, at the local FBI field office. Hi, Jim. Oh, hello, Bill. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, I'm sore. About what? This new case we're on... Oh, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Well, the crime is impersonation. Hey, did you ever hear of a con man named Tom Bentley? No, I don't think so. He has a long record as the brains behind a variety of confidence games, and now it seems he's got a new one. Huh? This Bentley goes into the Italian section or the Greek section, any place where there's a minority group not too far removed from the old country. Mm -hmm. He then represents himself to them as being from the Department of Immigration. And threatens to have them deported. Huh? No. No, Bill. He tells them that a new quota is going to be put into effect. And he can arrange to have some of their relatives brought to this country. For a fee, I suppose. That's right. He averages about $2,000 per victim. Wow. How many people has he taken in? A half a dozen that we know of. Well, since Bentley has a record, Jim, I assume we've got a complete description on him. Yes, we have. I've already had an alarm sent out on him. Have you got a copy of his record handy? Yeah. Uh, oh, here it is. Bill, let's sit down and study this, huh? Yeah. Maybe we can get some kind of a lead and locate him ourselves. Hey, 
Anybody here? Who is it? Tom Bentley. Oh, come on back here to the office. Quite an establishment you have here. I like it better at night with customers. How's the touch going? I'm collecting 3000 tonight. No kidding. Yeah. Your 25% comes to 750 pitch. Eddie gets the same. Very tidy. <laughs> Is this from Madam Young? Yeah, yeah, I saw her last night. I just talked to her on the phone now and closed the deal. When do you collect? Well, she said to come to her place at 9 tonight. And uh, when do I collect? <laughs> 9.30. Have Eddie here. I'll give him his end, too. Okay. Got any more suckers lined up? Dozens of them. Honey, if my Occidental charm sustains, we'll wind up owning Chinatown. Bill, I just got some information on Tom Bentley. He's pulling the swindle again. How do you know? A man called the police and complained. They told him to call us. He went for the racket? No, he met Bentley, and then he got suspicious and broke off negotiations. Too bad he didn't make another appointment with him before calling us. Yeah. But at least we do know now that he's in action here. What section is he working? Chinatown, and he's got a new angle. He now tells the victims the money they pay is a deposit with the government, that it's returnable at the end of a certain period of time if the immigrant has a job. I see. So these people aren't doing anything against the law when they give Bentley their money. Think you'll keep working Chinatown, Jim? Well, his pattern in the past seems to have been that he exhausts the section before he leaves it, so my guess would be yes. Mm-hmm. I've already alerted the police in the Chinatown district. Good. Uh, how about going down there ourselves? Well, Bill, I think one of us ought to stay here in case something comes in on that alarm. Okay. I'll go down there and check with you as soon as I get anything. Thanks. Did you call me? Yeah. I wanted you here for the payoff. Bentley's collecting tonight? Mm hmm. That Madam Young. He hit her for three G's. Three G's? Where'd you get that figure? From Bentley. He gave you a fast count. How do you know? I tailed her to the bank this afternoon. You know how much she takes out of the jug? Six thousand. Are you sure? I was standing there looking over her shoulder when the guy counted it out. Twelve five hundred dollar bills he gave her. Wow. An old dame like that ain't taking out an extra 3000 in cash just to go shopping Wait. with. What? There he is now. Bentley? Yeah. I'll buy the door. Oh, yeah. Go up and get him. Bring him back to the office. Okay. I'll see you back there. Hello, Mr. Bentley. Oh, hello, Eddie. Irene's back in her office. She's waiting for you. Oh, fine. This place really does business. Yeah. Her office is right back here. Yes, I know. Go ahead. Thanks. Hello, Irene. Hello, Bentley. Well, did you bring her money? No. Why not? I didn't get paid. The old dame said she wanted to wait until tomorrow. Why? I don't know. Maybe she didn't get the dough from the bank. She did get the dough from the bank. How do you know? Go ahead, Eddie. Tell him. I was there when she got it. Well, she didn't pay me. You're a liar. Now, now, wait a minute. Just pay us off and get out. How can I pay you if I didn't get it? Hey, cut it out. Hey, what are you doing? Go in his kick, Irene. I got him. Let go of me. Let go. Take it easy. Stand still. Get off of me. Well, it ain't in his pocket. Get away. What did you do with it, then? I, I, I didn't get paid. I can't hold him much longer, Irene. You won't have to. Irene! Ah, uh, hated to do that. That was my best face. We will return to tonight's exciting FBI file in just a moment. One short week from today is opening day of the 1949 college football season. All America will listen for thrilling plays like this. Gets the ball again. He files right into the center of the line. Two tacklers hit him, but he's still on his feet. Pulling his way forward for a big game. Well, they stopped him now, but it took four men to do it. Big gains on the football field aren't the only ones scored by college men. In almost every other field, the college-trained man or woman is hard to stop. You can prove that in dollars and cents. A college graduate is nearly 15 times as likely to make $10,000 a year or over as the non-college man. Right. 
The odds in favor of a college education are 15 to 1. That's why the Equitable Life Assurance Society considers its famous Equitable Education Fund one of its most important services. An Equitable Education Fund is a plan for far-sighted parents who want the satisfaction of knowing that their children will receive the higher education that means so much to future success. First and foremost, an Equitable Education Fund is sure. Right. This fund combines planned regular saving with life insurance. If the father dies or becomes permanently disabled, this plan makes it certain that his children will still be able to get the education he was ambitious for them to have. Second advantage, an equitable education fund is easy. You spread the cost of education over 10 or 15 years instead of taking a beating in four. A comparatively small monthly amount builds up into a sum that is ample to see a boy or girl through college. Remember, fathers and mothers, the biggest prizes life has to offer will go to college-trained men and women. Put your children in line for a more successful future by starting an equitable education fund now. Get in touch with your equitable society representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, the Chinatown Shakedown. The Federal Bureau of Investigation keeps close check on every field of crime. However, no close check is kept either on the number of swindles perpetrated or the amount of money that is taken from the numerous victims. There is no lack of interest on the part of your FBI in the crime of swindling, but adequate statistics are unavailable. The victim of a robbery calls the police immediately, but the person who is victimized in a swindle, more often than not, keeps it a personal secret. That silence on the part of the victim is part of the equipment of every swindler. He counts on it and uses it. It allows him to work the same racket in the same territory time and again, where a single complaint would result in either publicity about the racket, thus warning future potential victims, or the capture of the swindler, or both. In any event, there is no guarantee that you will not be the next victim chosen by one or another of the confidence men still running loose. If you should be chosen, and if you should then find yourself a swindling victim, weigh the price of your pride against the satisfaction of the criminal in knowing that you, the victim, are protecting him. Do that, and you will realize that you have but one course open, and that is to call your local police. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office. Well, Bill, we can get ready to close that Tom Bentley file. Why, was he picked up? Yeah, he was found late last night, badly beaten up in an alley in Chinatown. Wow. I was down there at the Chinatown precinct when the patrolman called in the report on it. Oh, good. I went to the alley where the policeman found him and an ambulance had just arrived. He was taken away to a city hospital prison section. Was he conscious? No. Have you checked with the hospital this morning? Yeah, he's still in a coma. I see. Bill, why don't you go over to the hospital, see if you can talk to him when and if he comes to him. Okay. Uh, Where are you going? Oh, I uh, found a slip of paper in Bentley's pocket with the name Madam Young scribbled on it and the address 959 Green Street. Well, that's in the heart of Chinatown. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, Bill, the Chinatown precinct said they'd send the rest of the papers that were in Bentley's pockets over here as soon as they're finished with them. Fine. I'll be back here as soon as I've seen Madam Young. Hi, Irene. Where you been, Eddie? Sleeping. You seen the papers? No. They found Tom Bentley. He wasn't dead. Hmm? Well, he looked real dead to me. Well, he ain't. And you know something? He was telling us the truth last night. Yeah? How do you know? I called that Madam Young again. She said she decided to pay the money. Hey. Now, look. You go see her and get the dough. Uh Uh-huh. If she asks about Bentley... Tell her he had to go to Washington. Yeah, but what about him? What do you mean? Do we cut him in now? No. From now on, we work the racket ourselves. Just a minute, please. 
Madam Young? Yes? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. Yes, Mr. Taylor. Please, uh, come in. Thank you, ma'am. You came about my nephews? No, ma'am. I came to ask you whether you've had any dealings with a man named Tom Bentley. Mr. Bentley from immigration? Yes, that's the man, although I'm sorry to tell you he's not from the immigration department. Not from immigration. He was to bring my three nephews to this country. Man was just here for money. Oh, what man? Man, Mr. Bentley, saying. Why you ask all this? Madam Young, Tom Bentley is a swindler. He's in City Hospital now. He's been there since late last night. You mean I have lost my money? We'll try our best to get it back for you. Now, where did you meet Mr. Bentley? Well... Can you tell me where you met him, please? Woman called me. She says she was Mr. Bentley's secretary. She says he from immigration... She say he come see me. And you saw him how many times? Once, two nights ago, once, last night. This morning, woman called again. And then the man came up here just before me to collect the money? Yes, sir. I see. Now that means the swindle is still going on. Mr. Taylor, can you get my money back? As I said before, Madam Young, we'll try. I'm going right to work on locating the man who took it now, and as soon as anything happens, I'll call you. Oh, Bill, we've still got work to do on that immigration racket. Oh? Yeah, Madam Young told me there was a man there this morning to collect. That's ten hours after Bentley's beating. I found out that racket was going on myself. Oh. We got a fresh complaint in this morning. Oh, from whom? A man named Ming Lee. They tried to work it on him, but he got suspicious and called the police. Did he give you anything that might develop into a lead? No, his only contact with them was the call he got from a woman who said that she was Mr. White's secretary. Uh, well, that means somebody named White has replaced Bentley. Could be a fake name. Uh, I don't know, Bill. When the woman called Madam Young, she used Bentley's name to make the appointment. Oh, how about that stuff that was in Bentley's pockets? That come up yet from the Chinatown precinct? Yeah, it just arrived. I haven't had a chance to look at it myself. Well, let's go over it, huh? Yeah, this is everything. This wallet and these pieces of paper, book of matches, and a few bills. You want to hand me the wallet? I'll check through that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Nothing in the money compartment. Nothing in this pocket. Nothing in here. How are you doing on the papers? Oh, these two look like they've been torn from the same pad. Yeah, they do. Uh, one of them has Madam Young's name and address on it. Oh, that's the one that I saw last night. Yeah, the other one has Halifax 0984 on it. 0984, that's Madam Young's phone number. Oh? Yeah. Uh, the one that's not off the pad just has the number 46 on it. What do you suppose that means? Hey, let's see that. Here. It could be almost anything. Yeah. Bill, I just remembered something. Let's get downtown. <laughs> you been? Collecting the dough. I've been waiting for you all day. <laughs> Did you think I was pulling a Bentley on you? Yeah. Where's the money? I got it right here. Well, lay it out. Here's your half. Six five hundred dollar bills. Mm, very pretty. Anything else you want from me? No. Why? I got a dame waiting for me at the bar. Oh, okay. Tell Harry to give you the good liquor. <laughs> I already told him. Hey. What's the matter? The dame. She's out there. Who are you talking about? The old Chinese woman. Madame Young? Yeah. Did she see you? I think so. What'll I do? That must be her. Uh, let her in. What? Let her in. Come in. I have been looking for you. I want my money. Lady, I don't know what you're talking about. I want my $6,000. Look, lady, I'd like to be able to help you, but I don't know you. I never saw you before. It is you, I'm sure. Eddie. Yeah? I'll take care of her. 
close the door. Okay. Oh, no, you oh. Is this the man, Madam Young? Yes, sir. And I think she is the lady who called me on telephone. That's fine. Just who are you, anyway? I'm a special agent of the FBI. What? We're both under arrest. Eddie White and Irene Douglas were sentenced to ten years in prison for impersonating federal officers. Tom Bentley, upon his recovery, will face state as well as federal charges. One clue that helped to solve tonight's case was Special Agent Taylor remembering that when the body of Tom Bentley was found in the alley in Chinatown, there was no hat found. He therefore reasoned that the slip of paper with the number 46 on it might be a hat check. Then followed a long, tedious search through the Chinatown district for a club that used such slips. When Irene Douglas's club was located, Special Agent Taylor inquired about a Mr. White. The hat check girl told him that Miss Douglas had a friend named White, whereupon the two agents went and got Madam Young. They brought her to the club to make a positive identification, which, as you have seen, she did. Madam Young's guess that Irene Douglas was a part of the swindling gang would not have been sufficient evidence upon which to get a conviction. But the FBI crime laboratory supplied that evidence when they proved that the sheets of paper that had been torn off a pad, which were found in Tom Bentley's pocket, were actually torn off the pad in Miss Douglas's desk. And so, once again, tireless investigation plus aid from the crime laboratory helped your FBI not only to apprehend these criminals in tonight's case, but even more important, also helped to convict them. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, let's hear briefly from an Equitable Society representative on the subject of an Equitable Education Fund. I always tell my friends and neighbors that an Equitable Education Fund is like paying for a college education on the installment plan. You distribute the cost over a period of 15 years or more instead of taking a beating in four. The man whose words you have just heard speaks for 6,000 Equitable Society representatives from coast to coast who are always ready to give you friendly help and counsel. If you do not know the name of the Equitable Man in your community, send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. An unusual account of crime in midair. Its subject, robbery. Its title, The Flying Thieves. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's program was transcribed, and the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Jeff Corey, Marlo Dwyer, J.C. Flippin, Alan Reed, and Peggy Weber. This is your FBI as a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Flying Thieves on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.